Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm so excited to see all these beautiful faces. And it's going to be an interesting session because um, what we're discussing, the topic we're discussing is networking strategies for job seekers. Networking strategies for job seekers. You know, as young people, um, we get to, um, most times we get to um, neglect the importance of networking because we kind of believe in ourselves so much. And sometimes it's not because we believe in ourselves, but because we feel shy to communicate with other people and we neglect the importance of um, having peop other people in our lives. So we're going to, this panel is going to discuss a few topics on um, networking and I hope that we are able to, Lynn, I'm going to start from this angle. I don't want to start with Mr. God bless. <laughs> All right, so. Um, Okay, so let me start with the ladies. <laughs> ladies first, let's say. Okay, the, my first question is, what is networking and how does it play a role in finding a job? Thank you, Onye. Did you say Princess, thank you, okay. Um, what's the role of networking? I would say that your network has the capacity to open you up to a range of opportunities. And your network could be the network that you have now or your ability to network. What is networking itself? Okay, what, let me start from what is networking. Yeah. Networking is essentially public relations. I'm a PR practitioner, so I will say networking is public relations, relating with people, meeting people, engaging people, talking with people, sharing what you do with people, sharing who you are with people. Then you said, how does it help you yeah, get a job. a job? I'll give you a very simple example. One of the first jobs I did with government was as a result of networking. What happened? I was at a restaurant and I saw an honorable member. I, because I'm politically aware or conscious, I was able to recognize him facially, and I went up to him, introduced myself, you know, told him that I see the work that he's doing, and just encouraged him. We had exchanged contacts, and that was it. Some weeks or months later, I had an idea of a project I wanted to do at the National Assembly, and I remembered him, and I said, okay, let me send him a message. And I said to him, um, good afternoon, Honorable. How are you doing? You know, um, there's this idea I'd like to have a chat with you about if you'll be available. And he said, sure, come to the office. We discussed it, and at the end of that conversation, he said, you have to come and work with me. Networking. If I had never gone up to him, yes. <laughs> if I had never known who he was, that would not have been an opportunity. So essentially, your network can open opportunities up for you, for jobs and for other things. I'll stop here. Okay, um, having listened to her, I would want to proceed to Mr. Emmanuel. So my question for you is, what are three, three core skills you would recommend a graduate to develop as a journey through the job market? Okay, so, uh, so first of all, just a bit of what she said, you know, I'm sure you must have noticed that in every event, like when this event finishes now, there is this group of people that just move straight to their car and they are, they are off. But you always notice that there are people that are having side conversations, having conversations, mm -hmm. you know, talking about what they do, what you do. It is very important. That is where you start from. That is the essence of networking. So while you are seated here today, please, at the end of this event, don't just get out to the bus or enter your car and drive out. For every place you go to, bear it in your mind that the essence of going there also is for you to network. I said this because I worked in a bank at the time. I worked for years in a bank, and I was a salesperson in a bank. Anytime I'm going to a wedding, I'm not just coming to that wedding to come and eat jello fries and drink and go home. I'm hoping that I will network, that I'll meet someone. I'm in a party, I'm in a club, anywhere I was at that. In fact, I go to parties for the essence of networking. So when I come here, I, I always believe that before I leave here, I would have established 
a contact through the networking. That's the essence of coming to these kind of meetings. Yeah, it's good you're going to learn, but you leave. But as you are leaving, continue to expand your network. So network, you know how a cobweb network is? You continue to stretch it. You never can tell how it will help you or how much it will land you an opportunity in the future. Or how much it will help you even managing your own personal issues. In my family, my wife calls me Mr. Fix-It because over time, I have built a network as such that literally everything that I need, because I have my phone, once I'm with my phone, it will get fixed. If you are, go if you are into IT or if you are into, um, if it's about digital marketing or if you want to come to civil society. But let me talk about the civil society that I know. Some people will call me and say, hey, man, they want to, how can they get a slot at work and a chance at working at Connected Development Code, follow the money. You know, frankly, if you come to Connected Development, you see people whose background is sciences, people that studied chemistry, people that studied zoology, people that studied sociology, people that studied political science. And I tell them most times, it doesn't really matter what you studied. But that one skill that I think you must have for you to be able to have that entry into the space is your willingness to learn. You must have that willingness to learn. And we'll always see it when you come to the interviews. Like someone said, even if you manage to pretend and scale through at the level of interview, before the three months of preparation, we'll kick you out. Because we'll clearly see that you, don't, you lack that willingness to, 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 to learn. And that willingness to be able to, you know, so I call it leadership or management skills. Willingness to be able to work with others. Willingness to be able to work with others in a way that others will shine, in a way that others will succeed. So it's not just about you. Because in every corporate organization, you cannot all by yourself deliver. Election just finished. There was a wreck in Sokoto State. The Sokoto State wreck. After that presidential election, if you remember, there were, I think, two wrecks that INEC asked that they should um, stay away from the INEC. Do you know the problem with the wreck? Not that the wreck wasn't good. Not that he engaged in any corrupt practices. But the wreck was micromanaging every single thing. The REC wanted to handle every single thing down to issues of 100,000 Naira. So he muddled up the whole thing and messed up the whole process because he didn't understand how to be a team player or how to delegate. So for that reason, he failed woefully in the administration of that election. So one of the skills that you must have, first of all, within you is have that willingness to learn. And if you have that, especially in the civil society space, it doesn't matter your background. Once you come in, and the space is open for you to learn, you will learn and you will grow and you get good at it. So I see you. So let me stop because you've been, you're trying to say something else. Uh, no, no, that's fine. It's just because of time. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Emmanuel. So I'm going to move over to this side of my hand here. Yeah? And um, I have a question for you, Mr. God bless. Um, my question is going to be directed on the Gen Zs, yeah? And um, it goes with, is the job market today so different from the past that we no longer need to learn employability skills? It's still about skills, but then it's now directed to the Gen Zs because if you look around, you would find out that um, the, 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 the work um, era has really changed from what it used to be. My example would be going to the office every day, you know, it's changed to working from home and all of that. So do you think that the market um, today is so different that the Gen Zs no longer have to practice most of the needed skills that we required? All right, so I'll just be very brief. I, I, I don't think Gen Zs should not learn employability skills. Working from home was not as a result of only advancement in the world of work. It was more about the pandemic we had, even though there were businesses that were already thinking in that direction to say four days a week and not five days a week strategy. Gen Z's should still learn employability skills because if all you know how to do is to work from home, the day you have to work with people, there will be trouble, right? And the, the skills you need to be able to engage in hard conversations, negotiations, you don't learn them from home. That is why people who do online courses, they are masters in online courses. They are masters in virtual reality. But the truth is that when they meet real life crisis, that's when you realize that in-person learning till tomorrow, 
until it really changes permanently. It's still the best way to learn because you learn all the different kind of skills that are available to mankind. So I do think that Gen Zs, for those of you here who are listening, please don't think that your iPhone alone connected to the internet is enough. You need to have people skills, teamwork skills. Those are employability skills because when you start building your own business, that's when you will know that it is important to develop skill sets. Oh, no, I want to be my own boss. Everybody can't be their own boss. For those who start businesses, they need employees to work with. And your employees, if all they know how to do is work from home, who will you see to do the office work? That's the answer. And I'll stop here and say uh, we made a judgment error. I wasn't naturally supposed to be on this panel. So I would vacate this seat so that I don't get in trouble. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome Ezekiel Yusu, who is originally meant to be on this panel with Mokhtar and Emmanuel and Joko. I know he's done like two other things that he wasn't supposed to do. So sometimes we're thinking, this, uh, this is the core thing that brought him. So he's got to do this one. So I'm sorry I stole a little bit of your time. Pardon. That's founder's uh, perks. Sorry. Okay, please take your microphone. God bless you. Okay, that was an interesting session. And um, I think I'm of the opinion that our employability skills are still needed, uh, even as Gen Zs, yeah? Because we tend to forget um, so much about the cultures because, of course, we feel... This is a new era. Things has to go. This is a new dispension. Let me use that. This things has to go differently. So what Mr. Godbless said is very valid. We need to learn employability skills, even if we work from home. Thank you so much. So I'll proceed to um, Mr. Mokta, and um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just had to use the Mister. <laughs> okay. So my question to you would be. Um, what strategies can job seekers employ to build and maintain strong professional relationships with potential employers? All right. Um, so, you know, you know, all of you, maybe all the people here are part of the Gen Z, and I think I belong to the Gen Z. I wouldn't want to take myself out okay. of the Gen Z, right? But over time, over time, what I have come to realize is when I went to school, I actually studied um, Sharia and religion. That's Sharia with just a path of international um, international relations and law. Yes. Presently, presently, I I lead Follow the Money in ten African countries and in the thirty six state of Nigeria. I am doing something closely, not anything close to what I study in school, right? I'm doing something that mad people are doing because nobody with sensible sense will do what we do. Because, I mean, you can be arrested at any time. You can be insulted at any time. You cannot wear any shoe that is not more than, you know, a bit something minimum to be like, oh, this guy is doing it. Now, coming back to your question, I think for me, what I have done for myself is to build five things, right? Now, the five things I was building I, I, I tried to look at two things before building that five particular things I was building. Now, I look at how deliberate I make effort, and I look at how systematic I make the effort. Now, when I started doing Follow the Money, when I started working for Follow the Money, a lot of offers came, right? Go and be a cluster coordinator somewhere, go and do this. But the thing is, I was not seeing future there. I will literally have worked for that agency that will pay me five times more than what I'm being paid here, right? But I will stay for that five years in the same position. But I followed the money. I started as a champion. I, in, in a year, I moved to being an intern. I moved to being an officer, to being a, a manager, to being like a secretary general presently, right? So how deliberate I make efforts, how systematic I make the efforts, is a thin as a young person. Now, if you keep that thing aside, is to build your credibility, build your legitimacy, build your accountability, build your service and power, right? Now, wh why, do I, why should I get you? I asked someone this question during an interview. 
We have 35 people at Connected Development. Why do you think we need you? Keep your certificate aside. Why do you think we need you? Now, how credible is, how credible are you? How legitimate will you give me problem in Nigeria? Will I want you to go to Zimbabwe and Zimbabwe will deny you visa because you have done something before? How legitimate are you, right? Now, how credible? If you're credible, you will definitely be legitimate. And if you're legitimate, you definitely hold yourself accountable and you allow people to hold you accountable. Now, if people are holding you accountable, definitely you provide service. And if you're providing service, I bet you this, you have power. Now, power in the sense that you control sort of things. I tell you what, Honorable uh, um, Ima, I call him Honorable, um, is, is my boss, right? But talking today, I am providing service. I sort of have power because he's listened to me. You have to look at me. You, you get the logic. So what I'm trying to put here is if you build that principle around yourself, definitely someone will want to bring you. I work for code today. Whenever you come to say you want to ask us for partnership or you want to come in to work for us, we know we cannot spoon hand you or spoon feed you, right? What we need is we want you to be in a certain level, right? And then we build it up. I know of a time someone approach connected development because I'm in charge of partnership and said, oh, we want to partner, we want to do this, we want to do this. At the end of the meeting, I told him, man, I bet you this, if we're going to do partnership, you cannot scale through. But let me approach the management with the point that can code, mentor you for three months and then come back with the partnership. We did that for three months and when he came back, he came back with a grant, right? So are you willing to be deliberate? in making effort? Are you willing to be systematic in making the effort? And do you see future where you are is a thing. But lastly, what I will say on that question, I know a lot of people will say, go and volunteer. Yes, I was telling Emma and Mukhtar there, the people that say go and volunteer, right? It's sensible, it's a thing, but bro, oh, understand something. 537 naira per liter, it's something else. So please, let's rethink that. So build yourself to one certain level that you can make money, right? Build yourself, build yourself, build yourself. That is what gets you to a place where you can sit down and make um, um, your opinion heard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, a round of applause for him. That was very insightful because um, some of the few points I could take are there are no concrete, say, um, personal skills that you have to develop. Although there are also communication skills, analytical skills, all these other skills are very necessary. But just as a person, you don't have to develop your skills because um, you want to fit into a particular profession. You could do it because you have, you, it's always better, in my very few times I have had to work, I think it's always better to go for things that you have passion for. Because that way you're able to maximize your full potential on the job and deliver at your best capacity. So I think that was what I was able to pick out of what he said. Now we're going to go to um, Mr. Ezekiel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, my question for you would be, are there any networking pitfalls or common mistakes that job seekers should be aware of and avoid during their job search? Okay, um, thank you very much for the question. I'm going to respond to that question, but quickly, while um, he, he responded to the question you asked, and he also said something, so I'd just like to quickly touch on them. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? All right, so you see, the reason that I breathe is so that human beings, um, their lives can be transformed, all right? So my personal slogan is, I transform lives, I transform organizations. How many of you here are really looking for a job? Good. You're looking for a job. You're a graduate. You're not a graduate. But as soon as you graduate, you want to get a good job, right? All right, so let's get practical. Um, he mentioned that you must have the ability to network. I think she mentioned networking, all right? Then um, he mentioned, there was a very core skill set he, he explained. Sorry, Honorable. There was... Like, Ability to learn. Thank you very much. Teachability. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, we are no longer in a knowledge economy. You see, we used to be in a knowledge economy. Do you know what economy we're in right now? We are in attention economy. Quick example. Now, there was a guy in Calabar who had over three world records. 
Guinness. Seven. Yeah, I think there are two of them. Yes, yeah, seven. Did you know about these guys until recently? No. But Bachi just got one. And everybody knows her. Well, she has not gotten. But the, you, you can see the, the reputation and the publicity has gone out so much that, you know, you would almost assume. I think we're still waiting for a feedback from Guinness. Yeah. Now, what did she do? She caught your attention. She was intentional. Now, this is it. You need a job. You need to pull attention. The reason for your social media is not to post gibberish. It's to post you, your skill set, and your strength. We're in an attention economy. You must be able to communicate. You see, she mentioned it. It is very key. Ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot communicate, you are no longer relevant in this world. You must be able to com communicate complex ideas into simple ideas. And you must be able to communicate relevant and up-to-date issues. I'll give you an example. You're in the banking industry. Recently, the Central Bank withdrew the license of about 106, uh, 106 microfinance bank. Talk about it. Look at things happening in your industry. Things that are up-to-date. Put them on your LinkedIn. Put them on your Instagram. Put them on your Twitter. Put them on your WhatsApp page. That is how you find individuals who are going to give you a very good job. Now, this is another side to it. You see, the nature of Nigeria is such that uh, because of some of the issues that we have, both economic, both political, we have lots of SMEs, all right? We have a lot of small businesses that are managed by individuals who only care about profit. And so they don't care about career development, and they don't care about emotional intelligence. They don't care about how you feel. The most important department in all of these companies is the sales department. As long as they're driving revenue and they're bringing profit, that's what matters. And then they pay you what they think you deserve. So nobody really cares about how you feel on the job. You're only going to be successful if you get a job with multinationals and corporations. But unfortunately, most of the jobs that are available now are available are coming from SMEs. So while you're looking for a job, I'll give you a few tips. Anytime you get a job opportunity, first go to their website and check for corporate governance. Number one, do they have a board of directors? Number two, check their financials. If you don't see these two things, red flag. Because right now we're talking about mental health. A lot of people are doing jobs that they, they feel very miserable about. They're doing jobs they don't like. Mondays is a nightmare to a lot of persons. Friday is like, oh, praise God for a lot of persons. And millions of Nigerians. So while you are so hungry to get a job, please be very, very careful. Do your background check and ensure that you're going to a company that has structure, that is not managed by one person. When it is managed by one person most of the time, when key decisions are taken by them, HR is usually thrown on the back seat. It's the truth. Because they won't allow HR to do the things that is expected of HR. Because they want to make revenue and they want to cut costs to the barest minimum. And they want to use you as much as they can. Which, of course, one, is not good for your mental health and is not good for your career development. There is nothing good about it. The only good thing about it is your salary. And you're worth more than that. Is this making any sense? What economy did I say we're in? What did, I, what did I say we're in? I said, what's the core skill you should have right now? Aside from being teachable. What's the other one? Communication. Please, I'm not just talking about lexis and structure. I'm not talking about vocabularies. I'm talking about your ability to pick a complex subject and explain it that a five-year-old will understand. And you pick the key things in three minutes. In two minutes, you explain. Let it be on your Instagram reel. Let somebody pick one or two things from it. And then they, get the, you know, they, they, they learn one or two things. Your LinkedIn page, please. Everybody, of course, you expect it. You ask the question now. Your LinkedIn page should not be, uh, what's the word, boring and should not be idle. I expect that everybody here who is looking for a job should have a LinkedIn page. On your LinkedIn page, one, you should discuss issues that are relevant in your industry. You must be able to write. Communication is not just about the spoken, it also involves the writing. All right, you must be able to write one or two things in your career, on your career, in your career area about your industry. So that from time to time, your page is busy and people are saying, I've gotten several offers via LinkedIn. Lots of offers. They come. They just DM. Another thing you should do to your LinkedIn is go to your insight. Are you guys paying attention? Look at the number of searches that appeared for you. For some persons, you see 50, that you appeared in 50 searches this week. Now, one of the good things for you to know you're growing is those, the number of appearances you have must be increasing over time. If it's not increasing, you're not growing. And you know what will make it increase? 
it means that you are discussing issues that are relevant and you're discussing solu solutions to the problems that organizations are having. I don't care what department you are in, whether you're in operations, whether in human resource, whether you're in finances, discuss latest issues in your industry. All right? It appeals and it attracts. And do maybe once in one week, you can do a video. And sure, you do a video. You just have to do a video. And you must speak. Look for a good background and discuss it. All right? Other times, you put it into writing. Now, people are reading what you're writing. People are watching your videos. Trust me, you don't have to be working. I tell people, don't go out looking for jobs. The tools for you to get your jobs are already available in your phone. Maximize them. Publicize yourself. Make meaningful contributions. And trust me, you're going to have everyone who needs your services at your beck and call. Teachability skills, communication skills, then adaptability skills. Do you know what is constant right now? Change. Those guys, the 106 licenses that was just taken. You just thought about licenses. Some people just lost their jobs. I used to be in learning and development. I used to be in human resource. And then one day, the company that I worked for was an asset management company. And so they had liquidity issues. And they had to pay about $5 billion out to investors. And all that was available at that time was $3 billion. So everybody in the company was dodging. So they needed a new department. They called that department Payment and Reconciliation. So your job as Payment and Reconciliation was to tell somebody who is expecting his 800 million naira to be paid into his account at the expiration of his, of, his, of his investment term. Your job is to tell him that, Oga, you will not be able to get that 800 million at this time. I will be able to give you 300 million and I'm going to spread, spread your remaining 500 million over three months. That is one of the toughest jobs to do. Can you imagine telling somebody who's expecting you to pay into his account tomorrow? He has invested with your company for one full year. He has invested maybe some 300 million and he needs that money to pay his tuition, his children's tuition. And your job is to tell him that, sir, you will not be able to get that money. Nobody took up that responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? I picked up that responsibility and I received the greatest insults and beatings. When I say beatings, verbal beatings and embarrassments of my life. But you know what? I became better for it. In fact, I thought I was emotionally mature until a woman came. Now, the nature of my job, you wear suit and tie. You sit behind the desk, you are counseling, you are talking to people, you are coaching. And somebody, now the new, your new job, somebody come to your office because you told her that her 500 million would not be available. And she jumped up because she was not as tall as I am. And she, because she couldn't touch my cheek, a scratch went by my chin and held my tie. That you, Yusuf, you must give me my money. What have you done? I have no idea. When, you know, she invested, I had no idea. I mean, you're holding me responsible for 500 million. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have to adapt. I think I did that for about six months. All right? And the company actually dashed me a car for doing that job. So, you must be adaptable. See, right now, don't say I am this. Don't say I am that. You must be able to do anything. When they ask you this, listen, in your companies or any new job, can you do this? What do you tell them? Tell them, yes. Go home and learn about it. Can you do this? Tell them, yes. Guys, are you getting what I'm saying? Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can see everyone is excited. Thank you so much. We wish, we really, really wish we had like so much time on our side. So we would have had the time to discuss this properly. But I'm very sure that we've all had the opportunity to learn that networking is very important and it's very key. And then there are a few skills that we really that we really need to learn as um, job seekers and even if you are an, on a job already, and that is communication skills, analytical skills, adaptability, and listening. You have to be ready to, to learn and to be taught. So I'm just, going to, I'm just going to go around one more time, just one minute, please, and just um, like a conclusion, what would you have to say in regards to networking and let's say, ready to work, for people who are ready to work. Thank you, Princess. Thank you. Well, a lot has been said already about networking. I think the only thing I'll add with regard to networking is how you go about it. The how is very important because networking that should get you a job can get, exactly, can also go the other way and people maybe look down on you or don't respect you. What is the deciding factor? The how. When you meet people for the first time, that's not the best opportunity to tell them you need a job. 
you may need a job, but what you should focus on is telling them what you do and why you're good at it. If you even read the conversation or read the room and see that it will be able to accommodate even that conversation. Sometimes networking might just be you talking about the soccer match of yesterday and you build a rapport with the person you're discussing with. They like you. They like how you make them feel. And then you build a relationship. And then later on, other opportunities come in. There's a popular saying that we should always bear in mind. It says, people often forget what you say, but they don't forget how you make them feel. That's one of the tricks to networking. Engage and connect. Connect, that's the word. Connect with people. It's not a business pitch. It's a relationship you're building. Except, of course, you find yourself in the room with, in an elevator with Dan Gote, and then <laughs> you shoot your shots quick and sharp. <laughs> so I'm sure you understand there are different environments for different things, but be emotionally intelligent in networking. That is what will set you apart and make sure that that networking translates to more opportunities, more jobs, more resources, and more strategic networks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. A round of applause, please. Okay, so for me, young, um, when I say young, well, yeah, I'm still young. <laughs> of yeah, course. I'm not yet 40, <laughs> so yeah, I'm still young. Yeah, for most young people, what I will always tell them, yeah, so when you network or when you are seeking that opportunity, whether to work, and working comes in different ways. I mean, not necessarily working in a corporate world. It may be business. It may be becoming an executive assistant to someone and all of that. When that opportunity comes, what do you even do with it? For many young people, you know, you, you, so you have an opportunity to have a conversation with her. Uh, but probably because you saw that she drove in here with a GL or a, a, a Giga 2022 model, you typically start thinking of what you can get of this person right now. You start having some sort of entitlement mentality. So because you are, you, you are, you are privileged in your networking to sit in a room where these people are now discussing business that runs into millions, all of a sudden you are not thinking entitlement. How can you, what can you get at this very moment, this temporary moment? When you start thinking that way, you will not really go far. Or because you are, you find yourself in that opportunity and you feel that this will have a lot, you are leaving, you are probably thinking of this 100,000 that he just left on this table. You now start talking about, ah, bros, fuelo. When you start doing that, you see that, net, that door that has been opened will be shut at you eventually. Next time when you call, that call will not be answered. So when you see yourself in that space, that you're opportune to even sit with, those, sit with those people you think that are privileged, by all means, kill that desire to beg. Kill that desire to ask for urgent 2K. Kill that desire to ask for data bundle or transport. So I tell you, in my earlier days, I will sit with people, I'll come to places where you come, and they will serve you drinks that, you know, a bottle of this drink is costing 100,000 naira. And frankly, at that point, I probably have in my whole account put like seven of them together, seven accounts together. I don't have up to 20,000 naira. I don't even have 10,000 naira. But there, you're serving me a drink that is more than my total account balance. But when you live there, you live with your head high and you get out and find your way. If you have to check, check and go home. Don't blow that chance you have. And then again, when they eventually accept you into that space and give you an opportunity, what do you do with it? So there is this saying that says a fool at 40 is a fool, a fool forever. I've looked at it deeply, and I now figured that, well, the reason why they say a fool at 40 probably stands to be a fool forever is because within your 25 years old, well, from when you leave school, from let's say 22, 23, 24, 25, till you get to your 40, opportunities are going to be coming. What are you doing with the opportunities? What culture are you building? The opportunities that are coming with you, are you going to be building assets out of the relationship or are you going to be burning every opportunity you have? So by the time you keep building these opportunities and converting them into assets, by the time you get to your 40, you've realized that you've created a huge network 
of assets that your life gets better. But at the same time, from that you're 25 to your 40, every opportunity that comes your way, if you have killed it, they gave you money you didn't deliver. They gave you tasks, you come back with stories. You tell somebody you will do these things, so I'll bring this into you. you. It's expected for you to present this thing here before night, so he will de- God bless will deliver it by 10 o'clock. By 9.45, you are calling to talk about traffic and stories and how your data finished and how you didn't have light all night. When you don't use those opportunities when they come, you will burn them, and by 40, you would have lost all your goodwill and destroyed all your assets, and it becomes very difficult for you to be able to fly and grow. But when you build them, you grow, and life becomes better for you at 40. So when that opportunity comes, kill entitlement, kill beggy beggy, focus and deliver. Deny yourself. At the time, eh, I, I worked with someone who was high up there, so she could call me at very odd hours to give me a task. Now, when I get there, because I know this is an opportunity, many young people around cannot even be trusted. So when someone at that level feels, calls you in, is a huge, and asks you to do something, don't be like that many young people with excuse. By all means, I could stay awake all night to make sure that I present that document the next morning. And when I get to her in the office by 9 o'clock a.m. the next day, I won't come there talking about, ah, oh, madame, eh, this night eh, here. Hmm. I will come there looking cool and smart. I will make it look like it was easy. And I will deliver it to you. So once I agree that this thing is delivered, that's the culture I've built over time. If I tell you this thing, I will do it. Forget about it. Go ahead with other things. Because you see this thing, I will deliver it. The world is looking for young people who can deliver. Because a lot of young people cannot deliver. Once you build that culture of being able to deliver, you become reliable. People start trusting you. You will become custodian of their insecurities, their fears, their, their everything. They now start building their life around you. And at that point, you don't blow. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, uh, Mukta, I, let's just use one minute and maybe conclude on this, please. Thank you. All right. um, so, for me, I will say, to be honest, I always don't like making people laugh. I always want to make people get angry. Oh, your violence. <laughs> no, I, I'm not violent. Okay. <laughs> Getting angry makes you want to move, like, um, oh, okay. In makes that you regards. want to change. But okay. what, one of the things I will say is, please, can you look at someone that challenge you in your face to do something? Now, I work for someone that can wake up, look at me at an event, and say, oh, he will be called upon and say, oh, okay, come and deliver this. And he'll say, oh, I have my colleague here. I'll be stepping out and my colleague will take over. I bet you this, whenever I go to an event today, I always have a, a presentation or a speech about what my boss is going to speak about. Because he can come in at any time to say, take over and I move. That is the thing. So, can you work with someone that see vision, that see future, that see what you can do that you cannot do. I traveled to 16 states in two weeks, but I never believe I can do it, but my boss said you can do it, and I did it. What am I trying to say? When I'm doing it, I just needed someone that will open me. Till today, I, that's the last thing I will say. When I got into the very organization I am in, um, Emmanuel is here, it was a team's meeting, and I used to have this normal whatever. I, I'm coming from a house of four girls, one boy, and I'm the last born. So everything about my life, my sisters take care of me. And then I go to team's meeting, and they ask, what did you study? And I'm like, I studied Sharia and international law. Where? Sultan Qaboos University. And the most senior person there said, oh God, do you think we need someone that studies Sharia here? I stayed three months in that very organization. Nobody knows what I can do. I don't know what I can do. The organization don't know what I can do. Everybody is just looking at me. And I told myself one thing, because everybody busts laugh within the space. You know how young people now. When I, so to be honest, I get hit from home and then come to office. I don't know what I will expect. I stayed in that office doing what I'm doing now. Not because I wanted the work as of then. I wanted to prove each and every one of them that laughed wrong. And I did it. Today, as I speak to you, I was just being deliberate. 
And today, whatever you do, all I need is one simple explanation. And I go ahead and do it. When I told someone that after a presentation on budget analysis and I told him I studied um, um, Sharia, it was in Kenya, the man said, are you serious? You suppose don't be in Sharia Kodo. I'm like, ah, look at what I'm doing. So to be honest, for me, I would still say it, how systematic you make effort and how deliberate you make effort matters. And one thing you can do to scale is build personal relationship build personal relationship, and build personal relationship. Thank you. Thank you so much. A round of applause, please. So, Mr. Sigil, just one more. Um, let's just do this one more time. And um, just one minute, please. One minute. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'll just summarize. Uh, everybody should um, read um, the 2080 Principle Pareto by Koch. It's a book. You have to read. You have to read. Uh, it's one of the things people don't do anymore. No, they, they're asking for the name again. Okay, uh, the 80-20 principle by Koch. I can't remember the other name. K-O-C-H. K-O-C-H, okay. Then read the power of habits. Power of habits. Um, uh, I can't remember that uh, the author now, but just type power of habits. Sorry? Brian Tracy. No, 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 not, not that one. The, the, the cover page is yellow. It has a circle. Um, it's uh, by one Harvard uh, prof like that. Then um, everybody should read Outliers by uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. These uh, books and so many more uh, would really help you. Now, one thing reading does is it, it improves your self-confidence. It improves your ability to read, ability to write, all right? It improves your intelligence. So read these books, okay? Then number two, don't compromise on how you look, all right? Um, some people say that it's, it's a waste for you to spend on dressing. All right, that used to be before. In this new world we're in, um, investing in how you look is investment. That's why I called it investing. I didn't say buying clothes. All right, when you look good, it's good investment. Okay, take that too. Number three is collaboration. All right, um, collaboration helps you to know that you don't know. That's one thing I like about collaboration. Everybody, every one of you right now, you think you are a master, you are a pro in your field. You'll be shocked when you meet one 21-year-old boy or girl who will dust you from beginning to the end of everything that you think you know. So collaboration exposes you to your ignorance and it helps you to know, all right? And um, finally, this key one here, finally is, uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, as much certifications as you can get, keep learning. If you have a master's degree, you have an MSc, go for an MBA. If you have an MSc from Nexford, for example, uh, go and get another one from Amadou Bello. If, you, if you've got one, one from Amadou Bello, go and get one from uh, Metropolitan London, Metropolitan uh, LMBS. One of those, just keep getting all these things. It helps you to become better. It increases your confidence level. Above all, it helps you to network. Thank you very much. A round of applause for him, please. So I just want us to quickly do something because I was jotting out a few things, but I don't want to go with it. Um, I don't want to just leave the stage with it. So turn to your neighbor, and then let's all say it as we go. Idon. Please, I want to hear the, the voices of everybody echoing. Idon. Idon. Network. Be smart in the process. Learn. Communicate. And be confident. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful session.